What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got another live fantasy football mock draft back on Fantasy Pros with a 10-team half-point PPR setup with that sixth overall pick. As far as the roster is concerned, one quarterback, two RBs, two wide receivers, a tight end, a flex, and then six bench spots. No defenses, no kickers, focusing in on the skill position players. And ranking-wise, we're going to go ahead and use some composite ADPs and also NFL.com's pre-draft rankings to switch things up a little bit. But other than that, let's kick this thing off. And while the draft loads, a quick reminder. The other day, we made a huge announcement concerning our giveaway from August 27th to August 31st of the 2020 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide. We urge you, go ahead, take advantage of this absolutely free. All you guys have to do is just, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and then go ahead, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin. DM us with that email and we'll take it from there. And you get to take advantage of that completely free copy, which includes top 150 overall player rankings and standard and PPR formats, individual player bios, tiers, projections, along with general fantasy advice. We'll put all that information in the description, but let's go ahead, get into this draft because we have kicked things off. And as you can see, the first couple of picks are on the board here with McCaffrey, Saquon, Zeke, Alvin Kamara, and I think pretty much across any type of PPR format league, those are going to be the first four picks for the most part, at least the first three. Then at number four, you could argue a Camara, you could argue a Henry or a Dalvin Cook. Personally, I've said this for a while now, I have Dalvin Cook at that 104 spot in the tier one category, actually above a Camara because he doesn't have that Latavius Murray presence behind him. Don't get me wrong, Alexander Madison is a great backup, but he is not in that same breath as a Latavius Murray, who does have some standalone value. So for that reason here, it's only between two players. It's between Dalvin Cook and Clyde Edwards-Alaire. And I'll go with Dalvin Cook. I'm interested to see where Clyde Edwards-Alaire will go. Per these rankings, he's ranked 13th overall, but I do believe he will go sooner than that. And if you guys have been doing mock drafts of your own, you know that that to be the case as well because pretty much since the news about Damian Williams came out the value for Clyde Edwards Alaire has shot up he's been a first round pick and like I said I'd be all right taking him at the 106 as far as where he goes here let's go ahead and recap some of these selections after our Dalvin Cook pick you see Derek Henry Devontae Adams Austin Eckler at the 109 that is a shocker that's going to be the biggest reach that is probably going to take place in this draft. Now, Austin Eckler is usually a late second round selection, maybe even early third rounder, depending on your league size and scoring type. Joe Mixon, Tyreek Hill, then Clyde Edwards-Alaire. So actually good value on Clyde Edwards-Alaire, but Austin Eckler was a big reach in my opinion. DeAndre Hopkins, then Nick Chubb. So now we have got a decision to make. You know, do we go with a wide receiver like a Julio Jones or do we go running back? And honestly, this is going to be a dilemma that I probably have to make in my official draft coming up because the way I set this thing up is actually going to be pretty similar to that draft because our league actually releases our draft picks a little bit earlier to incentivize potential draft pick trading. So this is going to be the spot that I am picking from that sixth overall spot. So right now, Julio Jones or going another running back, that is the decision that I have to make. And while I do love Julio Jones, I also think that if I wait on a running back, that in the third round, I'm going to have to go ahead and go with a guy like a Carson, a Gurley, or Fournette. And I think that'd probably be a little bit of a reach where I'm at right now. So for that reason, I feel like I have to go running back here. I love Julio Jones, but the running back position is king. And there's, in terms of overall scoring, overall rankings, not that huge of a difference between a Jones, a Kenyon Drake, a Jacobs. And right now, I'm considering three guys. Miles Sanders, Josh Jacobs, Kenyon Drake. Sanders with that lower body injury, I'm going to go ahead and dock him a couple spots, pass on him. So it's between Drake and Josh Jacobs. You know, I get both sides of the argument. Drake is someone that maybe has a Chase Edmonds behind him that people are hyping up and you might be getting a little bit nervous about. And Josh Jacobs, 
well, maybe he's more of a standard suited running back, but if that all that hype about him catching 50 to 60 balls ends up being true, then he's going to be a great value. I'm just going to go ahead and take Josh Jacobs here. I love both these guys. I'm going to go with the higher rushing ceiling here. To me, I believe that is Josh Jacobs. So let's go ahead and land him here with that second pick and see what happens afterwards. Going back to our draft board, you see Julio Jones right afterwards. So pretty much like we predicted, if we didn't take him, um, it would be someone else. Actually, I should say two picks afterwards. Miles Sanders was the pick after us at the 206. Kenyon Drake then, Travis Kelsey, Chris Godwin, George Kittle, Aaron Jones at the 302. Then Kenny Galladay, Chris Carson, and Patrick Mahomes. Now, Patrick Mahomes in the middle of the third round. Honestly, I'd be waiting in the fourth round if it's my own personal team and I'm making every selection. Until I'm looking at a quarterback, I realize Patrick Mahomes is an elite guy. But for me, there's still some great talent you can get here, especially at the wide receiver position in this third round. And if this is how things break for me in my actual draft, I'd be ecstatic because a guy in Mike Evans that I love is here available at the 306. I'm going to go ahead and really not waste too much time and just add him to our team. Let's see what happens afterwards again and break it down real quick. You see Lamar Jackson, Odell a little bit earlier than I anticipate. Le'Veon Bell as well, I think a little bit earlier. Todd Gurley and Leonard Fournette, both guys that I would prefer over Le'Veon Bell. Allen Robinson, then Gurley with that first pick in the fourth round. Cooper Cup, Mark Andrews, and then Leonard Fournette. So, Let's go back to our cheat sheet here and look at the guys that are still available. You see a DJ Moore, who I do think is a good value at this point in time, but I'm also looking at a guy like a James Conner, and that's what I have in the back of my mind going James Conner here. You know, getting a workhorse running back that's also very involved in the passing attack is something that I think is very valuable with a great offensive line, with a returning Big Ben. So be, right now I'm between two guys. I'm between DJ Moore and I'm between James Conner. And I've said this before, I'm going to go ahead and add depth to the running back position when I can and when I see value. I realize DJ Moore is a great wide receiver, but I like my selection of Mike Evans. I think there's a deeper pool of wide receivers afterwards, like a Thielen, like a Robert Woods, like a Calvin Ridley, you know, a, a, and, and some other guys afterwards, Tyler Lockett. So for that reason, I'm going to go James Conner here. Uh, Adam Thielen is also a guy that I really like, but we started out with Dalvin Cook. Not that it really matters, you know, getting the running back and wide receiver uh, stack. Obviously, I'd prefer for it to be quarterback, running back, or quarterback, wide receiver. But when it's that great value, and when I think both these guys are going to have huge seasons, uh, I'm not all that worried about it. So let's go James Conner here and see what happens. If one of those wide receivers manages to fall to us, and unfortunately, it's not the wide receiver we were hoping for. A.J. Brown is the guy that falls to us. After our James Conner selection, you see Juju, then Thielen, D.J. Moore. Great value on both these guys. Amari Cooper, Calvin Ridley. Great value on Amari Cooper as well. Zach Ertz, Melvin Gordon, then Robert Woods, Corlin Sutton, and Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor going at that point in time for me is way too early. I still think Marlon Mack has something to say about that. And now let's shift our attention to another wide receiver. The question is, who do we like? A.J. Brown, Tyler Lockett, D.J. Shark. And right now I'm between a Tyler Lockett and a D.J. Shark. I'm going to go D.J. Shark here primarily because I think the Jaguars will be more pass heavy because they'll be down in more games. So D.J. Shark will get a little bit more volume. So let's go ahead and add him to our squad and see what happens afterwards. Another guy that I do like is at the running back position here, David Johnson, David Montgomery. I prefer David Montgomery. I'm going to continue to say this. I think you can never have enough running back depth. Imagine if this is a two flex league, David Montgomery at this point in time, similar to a James Conner, getting him in the sixth round workhorse type of volume. Sure, there's question marks about the Chicago offensive line, but his main competition is Tariq Cohen. So you know Montgomery will dominate those goal line carries. I'm going to go ahead and add him here. Let's see what happens afterwards. We're going to miss out on some wide receivers, potentially on a guy like a Darren Waller. But, you know, that's what happens. I continue to prioritize that 
running back position, and I'm all right with it. DK Metcalf, Kyler Murray, Darren Waller there, like we mentioned, Stephon Diggs, David Johnson, Matt Ryan. So a run on quarterbacks begins here, and I think, you know, I guess it technically started the round before with Deshaun Watson and Dak Prescott going towards the end of the fifth round. I would be waiting on quarterbacks. Matt Ryan, I would have liked to have landed him, but I'll go ahead and wait afterwards. Right now, I actually like our potential choices here at the wide receiver position because we've got a Devontae Parker still available to us. And out of all the wide receivers that are still on the board, let's go ahead and mention them. Jarvis Landry, Andrew, A.J. Green, Tyler Boyd. Landry on that pup list, A.J. Green, hamstring issue, Tyler Boyd, I do like, but I have Devontae Parker higher on my list. So let's go ahead and add him and get some more depth at that position. Now, what do we do here with our next overall pick? Do we go tight end? Do we go with another wide receiver? And, you know, this right now is our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8th uh, selection. So at this point, you know, it's getting a little bit later in the draft. Let's start to look at some high upside guys. And Evan Ingram ranked here 72nd overall. I love his upside as a top five tight end. We've gotten some depth at the wide receiver position. We've gotten some depth at the running back position. If this, if this was Darren Waller here, it would be a no-brainer for me. Evan Ingram, a little bit more concerned because of the injury history, but I think at this point in the eighth round, still a good value pick. Julian Edelman was the other guy that I'm considering. Let's see if he falls to us. If he does, he will be our no-brainer pick afterwards, and I do think that's exactly what happened. He falls to us. I think that's getting very lucky because right now Julian Edelman is being absolutely overlooked, folks. He could very well be a fifth round selection and I could be perfectly fine with that, especially in your, in, if you're in a full point PPR format. After our Evan Ingram pick, you see Marquise, Marquise Brown, Jarvis Landry, Ronald Jones, a guy that's going to pick up some steam here as the number one guy for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Still a question mark though, nonetheless. So, you know, it's the jury is still out on that selection, but in the eighth round, good value. Carson Wentz, Tariq Cohen, then a run on wide receivers. Fuller, Kirk, Brandon Cooks, DeAndre John, Johnson, CeeDee Lamb. And honestly, out of all these guys, I would still prefer Julian Edelman. So really want to point out the fact that we're getting lucky that Julian Edelman is available to us at this point in time. So let's go ahead and add him to our list, to our roster. And at this point in time, maybe we can start to look and add a quarterback because, well, we're one of the few teams that actually doesn't have one. Team one, team two, team three, team four, team five has one. So does team seven. So does team eight. So does team nine. Yeah, we're literally the only team without a quarterback. But, you know, let's go ahead and take advantage of that because now there's not going to be that big of a run on the quarterback position. So even though I love Tom Brady, if there's somebody else here at the running back or wide receiver position that I think is very good value, maybe I go ahead and take them first and gamble on, on Tom Brady being there. You know, normally Tom Brady wouldn't be selected here, but just because it's computers and it's a little bit random, I, I'm just going to go ahead and take him now, kind of ensure our selection. I think getting Tom Brady at this point in time is, is just great value, honestly. To me, playing in the NFC South, with all those weapons around him, Tom Brady is going to have a top 10 fantasy year, but that's just me. Josh Allen is also another choice. I'm just a little bit higher on Tom Brady than Josh Allen, so that was the logic there for me. I also see a Jameson Crowder here who I really like. I think he's going to catch a lot of balls for the New York Jets, so let's go ahead and add him as well. And now we can, again, focus in on some of these value selections. Let's see if there's any running backs that we've forgotten about. Duke Johnson, Tony Pollard. I wonder where Alexander Madison is. I'm guessing he was already selected if we go back to our draft board. And let's see if that is the case. Yeah, Alexander Madison was selected right before our Jameson Crowder selection, funny enough, to potentially get that handcuff for a Dalvin Cook but it's all right. I'm not all that worried about it. Like I said before, we've got good running back depth. If this was, you know, my actual draft and I, I land Dalvin Cook, I would 
potentially pay up for Alexander Madison a little bit earlier just to, you know, really get that insurance. But since it's a mock draft, not all that worried. But let's make our final two selections here. Let's see if there's any left uh, value left at the running back position. Chase Edmonds is still there, but it's tough to justify drafting Edmonds when you don't have a Kenyon Drake. That's why it's a little bit tough for me to go ahead and invest in any of these running backs, whereas some of these, you know, some of these wide receivers still present good value. I could potentially, you know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to go ahead and get a Josh Allen who's still on the board as a backup quarterback. I think that's good value at this point in time. He's got that nice base because of his rushing ability. So we go ahead and land him here. And now let's make our final selection and get an insurance pick to our Evan Ingram. This is how I would do th things if it was our actual draft. And out of the tight ends here, I continue to say it. I like Jack Doyle the most. I think he's going to have a great year with Phillip Rivers in Indianapolis. So let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. Go back to our draft board and get our final grade. I'm curious to see what it'll be, a B, 86 out of 100. I'm not mad at that. I think it would have been higher if we had probably two flex spots because David Montgomery right now is being counted as a bench player, but I love our bench. Uh, I'd probably call this roster a B plus, to be honest with you guys. Uh, I'd be very happy if this is how things break for me during my actual draft. Again, I want to point that out. I like the depth that we got with quarterback. I like the depth that we got with tight end. I like, I like our depth in general. You know, we the one pick that's I'm up in the air about was our fourth round selection of James Conner. You know, you could make the argument, should we have gone with a Adam Thielen, a DJ Moore instead? And that's that's something that I'm still I'm still debating. But you know, let me hear it in the comment section. Did you agree, disagree? Hopefully you found this helpful, along with any other fantasy questions you guys might have. And then one more quick reminder. Go ahead, take advantage of our limited time giveaway from August 27th to August 31st. Get yourself a copy free of the 2020 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide. All you guys have to do is subscribe and then go ahead, give us a follow on Twitter. Send us a message and we'll take it from there. All the information in the description. If you guys enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe. Check us out online at alldaypigskin.com for some exclusive content. And in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.